Services Committee, Congressman, stand by. Uh, I want to get a quick update on the new Republican push for a health care bill and renewed concerns about a government shutdown with just hours to go before the president marks 100 days in office. Our congressional correspondent, Phil Mattingly, is following all the late-breaking developments for us. Phil, what's the latest? Well, Wolf House Democrats now saying they will tie their votes in support of a temporary government funding bill to the promise that Republicans don't vote on health care at all. Might be an empty threat, though. At this point in time, I'm told Republicans don't have the vote for that newest push on health care, raising questions whether they'll get there at all. Tonight, Republicans renewing their attempt to push through the health care repeal and replace they've long promised. We have a moral obligation to prevent people from getting hurt, to stop damage from being continued. Now, with the backing of the conservative House Freedom Caucus, who opposed the original health care bill that stalled just hours before heading to a vote. Uh, I think we're, we're making very good progress. Don't have, we're going to go when we have the votes. But that's the decision we'll make when we have it. I would argue that this is, is a bill that a moderate would more likely want to support. The change? A new amendment negotiated by Freedom Caucus Chairman Mark Meadows and a member of the more moderate Tuesday group, Tom McCarthy. The amendment would let states apply for waivers that could weaken several key Obamacare insurance reforms, including the price protections in place for those with pre-existing conditions, what benefits insurers must cover in their policies, and the ban on allowing carriers to charge more based on a person's health background. My one and only goal in this has been to try to make this bill something that helps the, uh, the health insurance market survive. But all eyes now are on the party's moderates, who are far from supporting the amendment, arguing it will leave even more people without coverage. It doesn't help the people I represent. One of the criticisms I had about the Affordable Care Act is it made insurance so expensive that people who had it didn't even use it because their premiums were high, their deductibles were high, their co-payments were high. And people with pre-existing conditions, you're right, we can't deny them coverage. Democrats are quickly seizing on that opposition. The new Trump care will allow states to decide whether or not insurers have to cover Americans with pre-existing conditions. It's hard to come up with a crueler bill. And ramping up their efforts to slow down the process altogether. Now saying they'll oppose a stopgap funding measure to keep the government open if Republicans push for a health care vote between now and Saturday, President Trump's 100th day in office. What you see in the GOP haste to pass the bill and Trump trying to cram it down in the last 100 days, I think President Trump is really making fools of the members of Congress of his own party. But House Speaker Paul Ryan is pushing back, saying the blame for a potential government shutdown will fall squarely on Democrats. I'm confident we'll be able to pass a short-term extension, and I'd be kind of shocked that the Democrats would want to create a government shutdown because they have been dragging their feet. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer echoing that criticism. The Democrats at the last minute have come in and thrown a lot of monkey wrenches into the ability for this to get done, despite the president doing everything that he can to show good faith to keep this going. So it's not just a question of it's it's they keep moving the goalpost. And Wolf, just to give you a little bit of behind the scenes here on what's actually happening on health care. Leadership has been whipping votes, trying to get their members to come on board throughout the day. Those meetings are actually ongoing between some of the deputy whip team leaders and members that have been hanging out so far up to this point. No decision has been made yet. They're leaving open the possibility that they do try something before they go home. But everything that I've heard up to this point, both from lawmakers and aides, is that they are still short and they're not totally clear what the pathway forward on this bill may be. Wolf. All right, Phil, thank you. Phil Mattingly with the very latest up on Capitol Hill. Uh, we're back with Democratic Congressman Adam Smith. Uh, Congressman, before we talk about the possibility of a government shutdown, I want to get your reaction to some breaking news we're following. Just now, the Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, uh, he revealed that China has informed the North Koreans, informed the United States, but has uh, told the United States it, it has warned North Korea not to conduct another nuclear test or China would impose sanctions against North Korea. Your reaction? Well, I think it's a positive step if China is willing to step up and do that. Uh, they've always been very hesitant to put any pressure on North Korea. I mean, obviously, they're not happy. Uh, the North Korea is such a destabilizing influence in their region. But they're also mindful of the fact that if they sanction North Korea to the point of collapse, they don't want a failed state on their border. 
They don't want millions of North Korean refugees pouring across the border. So China has been said before they might do this, and they never have. So I'll believe it when I see it. But it's a positive step to put pressure on North Korea to hopefully bring us all back uh, from the brink. Of you what trust the Chinese to do the right thing? Because, you know, the, no. the president has <laughs> repeatedly said right. he's going to lean on China to do the right thing. Yeah, I don't trust them to do the right thing. I think, well, I'll agree with the president on this. He does need to lean on them to get them to do the right thing. Uh, I don't think we should count on it. We shouldn't count on it. Because, because, well, what happens if the North Koreans do launch a sixth uh, and maybe then a seventh nuclear test right now and launches another intercontinental ballistic missile? Yeah. Well, they haven't yet launched. No, an inter- but let's say they do. Yeah. Um, you know, these are all, you know, hypotheticals. I think the overarching issue with North Korea is, OK, we're worried about the capabilities they're developing. We're much more worried about the possibility they would use those against us or our allies. And look, we need to make our deterrence 100 percent clear. If they attack us in any way, they will be destroyed because, you know, Kim Jong Un is not a particularly stable individual but he is not suicidal. And we need to make sure that if he takes those actions that would attack us, that that is suicidal. Um, We will back up South Korea, we will back up Japan, we'll back up our allies, and we will defend ourselves, and we are vastly stronger than he is. This is an incredibly tense situation right now. Very quickly on uh, what's happening up on Capitol Hill, uh, you heard Phil Mattingly's report. Uh, Do you believe there possibly could be a government shutdown this weekend? There shouldn't be. And look, the back and forth on both sides here is not particularly helpful. Um, obviously, I don't agree with what the Republicans are trying to do with health care. Um, I think they're kidding themselves about the reality of what it takes to cover people um, with pre-existing conditions, to cover the elderly and the choices that have to be made. I don't support the direction they're going in on health care. We should not shut the government down uh, because of the direction they're trying to go in health care. I'm still skeptical they'll get the votes. Um, but the, the real big point here is this is just to get us the last five months of 2017, okay? 2018, the FY, uh, the fiscal year that uh, starts October 1st of this year, that's going to be a monumental battle. Is it going to be even more difficult than the one we're having just to get us through the last, I guess it's five months now, of uh, fiscal year 2017? Well, let's say that I, I, you know, Phil Mattingly didn't think this was going to happen, our congressional uh, correspondent, but let's say... The, the Republicans managed to get 216 votes on repeal and replace over the next 48 hours or so in the House of Representatives. You've heard your Democratic leaders say they will then vote against any funding and there will be a government shutdown. Yeah, I disagree with my Democratic leaders on that. I, I don't think that that is the position that, that we should take. Um, you know, we should do everything we can to stop the Republican health care bill. And we should also be mindful of the fact that just because they pass it in the House, the Senate has said they don't like this bill at all. Um, it, isn't, it isn't going to become law. So no, I don't think we should shut the government down over that.